ago. Jeff Cow, Sci-Fi Express Lane. Welcome to my blog. Welcome, welcome to my venting, my sharing. Right. Um, just, just had a birthday last week. I'm 57, and um, let me introduce myself. I'm Sci-Fi writer, filmmaker, and comic book creator. All right. So get that out the way. But I just turned older, right? Uh, which you do every year, and it's getting older now. And um, 50 is supposed to be middle age. I'm past middle age, and um, I'm still doing what I'm doing. And I was talking to my wife as I was getting dressed um, this morning. I'm going down to um, the largest black film festival, um, I guess in the world, if it still holds that title, um, the American Black Film Festival here on South Beach. and. Um, I've gone, I missed like two of them. I've been to every one they've had, I think in their 25 years, except for the first one and the one they did in California. But I went to Acapulco twice when it was down there. And, um, and then when it came to uh, South Beach, I live here. So um, I've been to every one. And um, I, I have to think about what to wear more now as I get older. And there's a lot of different um, moving pieces, right? Um, to 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 attending festivals and just you know staying on your grind as an older person. And um, I wanted to just blog about that. It seems personal, but you never know. Maybe it'll help somebody. You know, um, I don't know if you're old enough or if anybody get a chance to Google it. Maybe I'll put the link. Uh, um, in, the, in, the, in the comments, but um, there's a show that I used to watch when I was in high school and even in college called The Honeymooners um, with the comic great Jackie Gleason and his character Ralph Cramden had um, a thing going on where he was always thinking of the big idea. You know, he was a bus driver in Brooklyn and he was low income, right? Um, and uh, he was um, always thinking of get rich quick schemes. And this is going to be the idea. And um, that was the running joke, you know? And I feel like that sometimes. Like, um, you have, as a, I've been an entrepreneur since I graduated high school. And I'm pretty sure I was an entrepreneur in high school, but it really kicked in um, in college where I started my company, Red, Black, and Green Promotions. And when I graduated, I incorporated it um, and it became official. And it, I still have it to this day. And um, I use it to make my movies, although I haven't made a movie um, uh, well, I did make a documentary last year. It's just that I only had to um, use a little, didn't spend a lot on it. I only had to buy like two things, you know, um, for it. But <coughs> ever since that, um, I became an entrepreneur, I've always had different ideas, different plans, different things, and um by the time I'm 50, I've done it for like 20, 30 years. It gets to not, the ideas are not old by any shape. You just, it gets tiring and you start looking and be like, damn, maybe I'm Ralph Cramden. Maybe these ideas aren't really good or maybe the idea, because I never doubt the idea, right? The, the ideas are always brilliant, right? Um, it's just that sometimes in the execution of them, in terms of marketing them, getting them out. Um, as a writer, I think even as a writer, I'm always like, did I write the story well? I know the story is, the idea is good. It's just something that can be improved. And I've come to accept that as a writer that you're never going to be fully satisfied. I mean, of course, you got to get it edited and you got to have typos removed. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the story itself the comic book final product, right? The movie, the finished product, right? So yeah, there's things in a book that when a book is done, you be like, yeah, I should have switched that ending. I should have 
um, started it different. Why it took too long in the pacing to get to the third act to finish the second act or whatever, 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 you know, it is. And um, that's what happens as, as you age. So then like for film festivals, what they used to be, and this is book fairs, it's comic book conventions um, as well. It all goes back to like my days when I was in college entertainment. I used to feel like the ugly duckling. You know, when I talked to my friends and they talked about their jobs and they were really clear, how well are you doing? They had performance evaluations, you know, they could apply and, you know, upgrade. There was a promotion. And I was at a, a agency where I was a CEO. There's no promotion. How do you get bigger next year? You know what I'm saying? Sales. Well, how well is the market doing? You can't compare yourself to other people. You got to look at people doing similar thing to you. So when I went to the college conventions, I was like, ah, now I can see. And then it became annually therapeutic. I mean, I went to 14 and plus conventions a year. I think I went, there was years I went to go to 25 conventions. Every other weekend, I'm going somewhere, right? Um, and that was no problem. I think that's why I'm hoteled out right now. Um, but that's another blog. But I think they became therapeutic for me. Every time I would go, I would have a conversation with another agent and I would talk about being an agent and that just helped me put my agency into perspective, whether I was doing good or whether I had made mistakes, getting ideas, sharing good ideas. So um, I think um, film festivals do the same thing for me as a filmmaker. Now, as an older person, comic book conventions do that, and so do book fans. So all of those, because I'm in each one of those worlds. But being an older person, now you have to deal with uh, how many years am I going to keep being Ralph Cramden? Or how, you know, how come I didn't blow up before? You know, is there something wrong with me? And now I'm approaching this ABFF. And I have, you know, things that I, you know, when you go into a film festival or, or an event, book fair, comic book convention, um, as a creator, comic book conventions are sort of easier because you are there to sell your stuff. Um, but, um, and book fairs are sort of the same way. Um, however, even at book fairs and comic book conventions, there are people that can put you on, right? So you're still there to meet and, and greet and, and do business to see if you can get into an anthology. You can find somebody to publish your stuff. I don't know. And I know that's the same with book and combo. With film, there's really no market for you to sit there and sell your films, right? Now, American film market, AFM in California, you're doing that. You know what I'm saying? And that's exactly what it is. It's nothing but distributors. But a film festival is really not that place, especially if you don't have a film in the festival. If you have a film in the festival, it's really easy. Yeah, you know, you got the showcase. Um, in college market, we used to have showcases and then we'd have a booth to sell the artists that didn't get a showcase. And yeah, there was years that I got showcases, but I had rosters of 20 to 50 acts, man. And um, I needed to sell all of them and I targeted certain regions. I would sell certain artists because I felt, felt that they would do more. I would just throw the brochure out there and see who would who would get called, you know, who would get the idea, find out what they wanted. And then I learned how to do all of that. And I could represent that much talent. But um, for um, the film, there is only showcases. And so how do you work if you're not having a film in the festival? And so, like, for me, I have to go and say, look, I have a documentary, didn't get accepted to the festival, but here's the trailer, here's this and that. Um, I have some comic books that I, you know, have coming out. Maybe you would like to see the adaptation of the comic book to see if you'd be interested in the script and pitch. That's what you do at film festival. Now, as an older person, right, I'm coming in, I'm like, look at I've, I've now seen people go from where I'm at to getting picked up 
and being a major producer. Like I know people that are big time directors, writers, filmmakers all together that I've seen, that, of course actors, I'm not an actor, but I've seen actors too over the years that have grown. And I've only known many times them from the festival, so it's not necessarily somebody that I know well enough to, to say, hey, put me on. Um, maybe if I lived in New York or LA or Atlanta, where the film communities are a lot bigger, um, DC or Chicago, sometimes they, they even have bigger film markets in Miami. Um, but yeah, you, you, you see that and you're like, damn, I could be doing um, better. And then like I tell my wife, yeah, you'll feel like that. But then when you go to the festival, you'll see other gray-haired people. You'll hear other different stories of people approaching life and 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 um, these opportunities differently. And it'll allow you to put yourself into perspective. So um, kind of that's what I, what I really wanted to get to in um, this video was to, you know, kind of show you, you know, expose what I'm... Um, not say up against but expose like the factors right in this film festival thing um, I pace myself so I don't put too much pressure to walk away with something um, and I don't want to be too carefree to um, miss an opportunity when one does arrive like I'm it's 9 o'clock I'm on my first day of summer break from school and I'm or I left the house at 8 20 or something like that I got up at seven o'clock you know is that commitment possibly you know what I'm saying but you know I'm not slacking in this pursuit you know what I'm saying um but you gotta um pace yourself I didn't spend three or four hundred dollars or a thousand dollars on promotion materials either I went, I have promotion material that I'm giving out at other conventions. So I took some that I'm giving out at other conventions. I brought a couple of comic books. I didn't bring like 50. Like one year I knew, I think it was last year, I knew my stuff would do really good. I mean, my comic books had just come out or whatever. And I brought a grip, you know, maybe 20 comics. And I was giving them out. Um, I'm not doing that this year. I have other things. Um, not to mention, I'm only here for two days this year. Whereas um, last year, I think I came to every year. Now, I won't stay all day like I'm um, staying on South Beach. Um, but I will um, uh, stay longer this year than I am staying other years. I might actually stay to tonight I have no idea um, we'll see but um, my family we're going on uh, a, a, a trip this weekend so I can't be here this weekend for the festival but other than that that's it you know um, I wanted to share with you uh, I guess as an aged person this um, pursuit of film festival uh, stuff you know and um and how I go about doing it without burning myself out. If I make it, this is my origin story, you know, um, or when I make it more, cause I'm already successful. I have some movies on film, on Tubi and I have a um, comic book coming out um, this summer and later this year, I'm a part of a gigantic black anthology of space funk. So I got stuff going on. But anyway, um, that's it. Uh, Jeff Carroll, Sci-Fi Express Lane. Um, uh, that's it. All right, thank you. Um, as always, like, subscribe, share, and comment. All right, deuces.